TMG fam, it's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, I know y'all never, I, I think I got y'all stump, stumped, if I can get the word out, stumped with this video, right? First of all, salute to y'all, man. Hope y'all enjoyed your Valentine's Day. I hope your Valentine got everything they wanted and they hoped for. I hope y'all went all out, went crazy. Hope you didn't empty your bank account trying to please somebody. <laughs> and I hope the person that you went all out for appreciate it. That's the biggest thing, man. You know what I'm saying? It's the thought that counts. So shout outs to everybody enjoying. And even if you don't know how to have anybody, man, enjoy it with family or enjoy it by yourself. Figure out how to love yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm drinking this true serum. So I'm telling y'all the truth today. Out oh, this jar, I don't even know. Where does mason jar came from? But you always got to have your mason jar to drink something out of, right? So listen, I think I got y'all stumped with this one. If the sun goes out for 24 hours, what would happen? Like, I, I got to have y'all stumped with that one. Because I don't even think, I, I've never even thought about that, bro. We're so used to things that we don't think about, you know, what would happen if something like this ever happened, man. We, we're in our little bubble, you know, we in our little world. The sun sets, it rises and it sets. That's all we think about. And we, it's so automatic to us that we would never think of it not, it being out for 24 hours. Like, that could cause some some major disturbances in this world bro major things man so i'm so anxious to hear what could possibly happen i hope this blows our mind all right so if you are new to the channel man please take the time hit the subscribe button all right at the end of the video you want to see more smash the like button and also go show love to the vlog channel man the link should be in the description below we appreciate each and every one of y'all man for coming out, showing love and support. Gotta thank y'all. All right, that being said, let's see what happens if the sun goes out for 24 hours. Let's speculate for a moment. What would happen if our sun suddenly went out for an hour or for a month, or let's say even for a whole year? What would happen to mankind? The very last photons from the surface of our star and the last particles that make up the solar wind have started their final flight towards the Earth. No one yet suspects that the heart of our solar system has stopped functioning. Eight to nine minutes later and the sky suddenly turns black. Darkness descends upon the entire planet. No matter. I think like, y'all remember that scene from like Lion King with like Pride Rock? After the hyenas took over, I know y'all like, yo, this is the reference he gonna use. But I'm, I'm just, it's just saying, remember how it looked when they took over and it just looked like everything was dead. You know what I mean? There was no life. The trees were all dead. It just looked deserted. And, you know, it took the, the sun coming back up, everything changing for everything to grow. I, I think that's how it, in a sense, would look on our planet like trees and everything would die off vegetation plants all that type of stuff would die off it'd be rough bro no matter whether at the moment it's the deep dark of midnight or a bright sunny noontime at your location you can quickly and easily see the difference the stars are now all clearly visible against the sheer black backdrop of the sky. The moon is not visible at all, since there is no longer any sunlight for it to reflect. A moment before the onset of the all-enshrouding darkness, bright northern lights may appear due to changes in the magnetic field around the Earth and disturbances in the ionosphere. 
the most dreadful consequence of all is the complete and utter cessation of the process of photosynthesis, resulting in plants and cyanobacteria no longer producing oxygen. This will soon lead to, how shall we say, difficulties for every living being. After an hour, true panic reigns over the heretofore daytime side of the Earth. Power and communication outages propagate across the entire planet. Temper I didn't even think about that, bro. Now stuff is not producing oxygen. Like, what do we breathe in? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> I didn't even go that deep, bro, and I should have. I'm just thinking all crazy out surface. And um, in my mind, I'm thinking about, you know, your body can't tell day from night at this point. You wouldn't be, but they went straight to oxygen, bro. <laughs> For an hour, true panic reigns over the heretofore daytime side of the Earth. Power and communication outages propagate across the entire planet. Temperatures everywhere drop by several degrees, and the Earth's surface begins to slowly cool. But from the inside, the planet is still heated by its molten core. 24 hours in, dawn has not and will not arrive. Panic and chaos are enveloping the entire world. State authorities have almost zero control over the situation. Humankind is trying to figure out what the hell happened. What y'all think about? The purge, right? The purge. You would have to literally go into full-blown protection mode. You know what I'm saying? You have to barricade yourself in, grab all the weapons that you can, because it's no, it's not enough police out there to help you, bro. You will literally be on your own to protect your loved ones, bro. This is where the people who prepare for like the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> it'd be good to know them. You know what I mean? Because they have the little cellars or the underground little, you know what I mean? Living spaces, living quarters, and they got food store up. They they stored weapons. This one, this is the time to get to know one of them, man. Because they'd be the place that you would have to, you know, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you have to probably seek shelter with. Somebody you, you would have to seek shelter with. Control over the situation. Humankind is trying to figure out what the hell happened while coping with massive power and water supply outages. The temperature on the surface falls to between 5 to 7 degrees Celsius. That's about 41 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit and has now decreased by about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. That's a drop of about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Some species of plants and microorganisms begin to die. The inhabitants of the oceans, for the time being, feel almost no changes. After seven days, it's still dark. The average temperature on Earth is now minus 17 degrees Celsius. That's about one degree Fahrenheit. In areas where there are tectonic faults, it's still warm. I'm just getting cold just thinking about it. one degree, one degree outside, bro. Have you ever been around low temperature weather? I know a lot of Florida people are like, I don't really understand. I know what that feels like, but people up in Michigan and way up north and different places like that, they like, shh. We could tell you, bro, them getting close to them temperatures, fam. <laughs> I know I was up there one time and it was. <sighs> Dealing with that, I know, I couldn't take that, bro. Thanks to geothermal energy not letting the surface freeze over, most plants have already died due to cold or lack of light. Herbivorous and heat-loving animals also begin to die. In the oceans, phytoplankton begin to die as well. The inhabitants of shallow waters suffer tremendously from the cold, and the surface of the ocean is beginning to turn to ice. By now, scientists and other individuals have realized what has happened and rushed to organize and equip shelters. One month in, and the Earth is continuing to cool. The average temperature on the surface is now about minus 30 degrees Celsius. That's minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And almost the entire planet is now coated with ice. Virtually all plants and cyanobacteria have perished. Some species of trees, especially conifers, are still alive. But with the lack of sunlight, even they are not producing oxygen. 
In fact, most of the Earth's living things have died, but some bacteria still carry on with their normal life activity. Most of the remaining life on Earth is now found only near geothermal springs and underwater. Interestingly, the layer of ice on the surface of the oceans slows down their cooling. And in the areas of oceanic tectonic faults and geothermal sources, the water is still warm, obviously being naturally heated. But even in the ocean, the drama of a mass extinction event begins to unfold. Dang. So, oh man, bro. This is kind of depressing, man. Because in the back of your mind, you know possibly that something like this can possibly happen. You know somebody I want to know now and, and start to follow and, and continue to encourage Elon Musk, bro. <laughs> Now that whole Mars, life on Mars, putting people on Mars, this whole SpaceX thing he doing, it's valuable now after while watching this video, bro. It makes sense now what he's doing after looking at this. I was a little bit hesitant at first, but now I'm like watching this, I'm like, Go Elon, <laughs> continue to innovate, continue to do your thing, bro. The ocean, the drama of a mass extinction event begins to unfold. One year in and the surface of the earth and the oceans are covered with a thick layer of ice. According to Professor David Stevenson at Caltech, the temperature on the surface of the Earth should drop to about minus 40 degrees Celsius, and that's the same in Fahrenheit. Life endures now only deep in the Earth's oceans. And perhaps some groups of humans might be able to survive on the surface of the planet in places like Iceland and other areas with large amounts of geothermal activity. Professor Stevenson believes that the Earth will continue to cool for another several thousand years until the surface temperature reaches approximately minus 160 degrees Celsius. That's about minus 256 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, life on the planet, in the usual sense of the word, will simply become impossible. And let's not forget about the gravity of the sun. After all, it's unlikely that the sun could suddenly go out without losing its gravitational pull. If the sun ceases to hold the planets and other celestial bodies in their orbits, then the planets and asteroids will simply fly away into outer space, some of them possibly even colliding with one another. The Earth, for one, will soar out into deep space, where it could get bombarded with asteroids, comets, and radiation collide with another planet, or even someday end up in the gravity well of a black hole. There's also a very small possibility that after wandering through space for a very long time, the Earth would be able to integrate into another stellar system and find a new sun. In the end, however, it's important to realize that this scenario is just a fantasy, or rather a thought experiment of sorts. As for the real future of our star, in a couple of billion years... I hate when people say that. This is just a thought or this is a fantasy. That's what we said about a lot of things, man. Things always start out like that. But it had to come from somewhere. Somebody had to develop that. Like, people used to tell us all the time, like when we were kids, bro, they don't make them like movies. They don't make a movie about something that's not possible. You know what I mean? I don't know why that was, and that could be so far from the truth, but that was drilled into my head as a kid. And I always think about that. Like they don't make movies about something that's not possible. So anytime I, I hear somebody say that, I'm like, yeah, okay, bro. I'm not gonna be naive. Like anytime I watch Independence Day, I'm thinking like, yo, that could possibly happen any day now. As for the real future of our star, in a couple of billion years, the sun will swell and turn into a red giant. Our star will swallow Mercury and Venus, and Earth and Mars will become heated up to several thousand degrees. In five billion years, the sun will explode and throw off its outer envelope, leaving at the center of the solar system a gradually cooling stellar core a white dwarf around which will orbit whatever remains of the solar system after the explosion. Concerning humankind, 
its fate remains unknown. Hopefully, by that time, we'll be able to fly to other planets and star systems. But that... See that thing like me, bro? <laughs> Go, Elon! ...is a story for another day. Wow, bro, I told you. I told you I was going to mess with your brain. I told you it was going to mess with my brain. I knew it, bro. But just think about it, man. If the sun goes out for 24 hours a month, a year, several years, bro, think about where we, where we would be. Are we prepared for that? No. Probably not. So now Elon's ideas and different things he be tossing out there don't sound so crazy now, does it? It don't to me. <laughs> not anymore. I was a little hesitant about SpaceX because somebody, he was saying on Twitter, somebody asked him how many people he eventually has to put on, he, he wants to get on Mars, and he was like a million. You know what I mean? Eventually. And then they were saying how, you know what I mean? What's the steps and everything like that. I reacted to that video, man. So either it's out already, so go check it out, or it'll come out after this one. And um, yeah. He don't sound so crazy, bro, at all. <laughs> y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all think. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe. Something to make you think, man. Something to discuss with your family. Are you prepared? Y'all thought the zombie apocalypse was something. Are you prepared if the sun goes out? Ah, I'm not. Check y'all at the next one, man. It's your boy L to the next reaction of my piece. Y'all stay solid. Hey.